Yeah. And bionic limbs, <laughs> and brain chips, just wire me up. That's this fun. is like in I'm the year 2000, that. we were supposed to be having jetpack. Remember the Jetsons? Remember the cartoon, yeah. the Jetsons? We are supposed to have jetpacks yeah, by that. 2000. Where are they? Yeah. No, I don't have any jetpacks. No. And I don't want a fanny pack anymore. I just don't want it. <laughs> Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Dolphins lose again. The Cowboys scrape by the Texans. And Zion Williamson throws one down on the Sun. But we begin today with two NFC games that could have an effect on shaping the playoffs. Wilbon got the first one right. He had the Lions beating Minnesota, even though Minnesota came in with a 10-2 record. Later in the day, San Francisco got a very credible performance from Brock Purdy in his first NFL start, and they drilled Tampa Bay 35-7. Wilbon, which was the bigger result? Uh, Tony, the, the Lions, because the Lions now have won five out of six, and they're on the cusp. I mean, I look at these ridiculous, whatever is FPI or whatever it is that declares the percentage chances a team will do something like make the playoffs. And the Lions have jumped up to like, I don't know, 25% or more chance. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it seemed like a 0% chance. But whatever that, yeah. that is, they still, they're on the move positively. I told you they'd beat Minnesota weeks ago. I didn't even see it. I mean, this is part a, a, a division dynamic. Tony, the San Francisco win was perhaps more impressive, but didn't change anything. Tampa's not any good, and they're probably not going to be any good this year. And San Francisco, right. if they can get Debo Samuel back, maybe the most dangerous team other than Philadelphia in the NFC, maybe. But, Tony, that Detroit win, they're on the move. And to say the Lions are on the move, we don't say that. Not only every year we don't say it, we don't even say it every decade. So the answer for me has to be the Detroit Lions. Good for them. Yeah, I think you're prejudiced because that is a division that you watch all the time. Yes, it I is. am surprised the Lions won that game. I am not surprised Minnesota gagged like dogs because they do that all the time. The Lions are fun to watch. And yes, they're, as we say, on a heater. They've won five out of six and they actually could make the playoffs, which is remarkable considering a few weeks ago they were one in seven and were basically allowing 50 points a game. You know, so for them to be in this position... All credit to them. But where I disagree is I think the much more important result is San Francisco, not because of Tampa Bay, because you're right, they're a bad team. And the team that gets into the playoffs from that rancid hellhole of a division, either them or Carolina or Atlanta, New Orleans, whoever gets in, is going out in the first game, probably to Dallas and probably by 35 points. The reason I say San Francisco is because of Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy was better in this game than Jimmy Garoppolo is in most games. Oh, not in all, like me but now. in you most games. like me. If they, if they get to the point where this is the consistent result with Brock Purdy, yeah. they can be in the Super Bowl. We're not yes. saying Detroit yes. can be in the Super Bowl. One small note about Tom Brady. It's, it appears to be done. He's sailing it, or he's bouncing it, or it's yeah. too far, or it's too near. If you give me a two-minute drill... Six points down, and Brady, I'll bet everything I've got on it. But you can't get to a two-minute drill, Mike, when you're down 35 Down 35 you can't do it. That's what that game was it. like. So, eh, yeah. it was sort of a snowball. Yeah. I, I just hope Debo Samuel's okay. And, you know, a, a, a sprain is better than a break or a tear. And if he can come back, I mean, that would be important because he's the he's, – look, he's the best player on that team. I know they got a lot of good they ones, but to me, players. he's the best. Yeah. We had several other intriguing results. The Dolphins lost for the second straight week, this time to the Chargers. The fading Seahawks fell to the suddenly spry Panthers. The Giants got rolled by the Eagles. And the Titans are now just 7-6 and six after losing to the Jaguars. Tony, which of these teams should be most disappointed about losing? All right, stay with me on this. Tennessee, that is a bad loss at home. That is three in a row, and they're there going go. the wrong way. There you go. But today, they're still in the playoffs. They're still in the playoffs. Miami, that's a bad loss. That's two in a row, and the mythology of Tua is beginning to wane. I believe he was 10 for 28, which stinks. But as of today, they're still in the playoffs. The Giants have run out of fuel. It's that simple. I told you weeks ago, do not bet on the Giants and the Jets to do anything special. The Giants are 1-4-1 one, and one in their last six, and even with that, today, I believe they're still in the playoffs, which by elimination – leads me to Seattle having the most impactful loss because yep. they are not yep. now in the playoffs. 
You cannot lose at home to Carolina, a team that a few weeks ago was 2-7. and seven. You cannot lose to Sam Darnold. You cannot get 24 and give up 30 to Carolina, especially when your guy, Geno Smith, 30. is going to unanimously win comeback player of the year. And he got you enough points. So that's the most impactful loss, Seattle. Giving up 30. Tony, I agree with you. I want to disagree. I want to say, I'm not going to say it's <laughs> Miami. Miami went to California and no. played two games. They were going to lose. I mean, they, 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 right. you always, go, now maybe they weren't, maybe they were slight favorites. I don't know because I don't look at that stuff. You do against the Chargers. But they weren't favored to beat San Francisco a week ago. So I'm not disappointed in not Miami. It's Seattle. And you know what, Tony? I think I, yesterday I'm in second place in my pool. And the only thing I got wrong in a bad, loud, stupid way was taking Seattle. Not only did I take Seattle, Tony, I, I, took them, I took them confidently. It's a confidence pool. And you assign the high number of double-digit points to the games you know you're going to get right. And I had Seattle, and I had like 13 or 14 out of a possible 16 points on Seattle. What were they doing? How does that defense give oh. up that many points at home to them? I, I know Carolina could be better, and, and congratulations to that coaching staff for pulling that team, rallying them, pulling them yeah. together. Will, but Steve, still, Will, Will, Tony, I think is the coach. Ski, Steve coach. Wilkes, yeah. it's, it's the most disappointing yeah. of those losses that we listed there. Let me I just believe. tell you what this sets up. This is what it sets up. Sunday night, the Giants are at Washington. Yeah. The winner is going to get in the playoffs. The loser is probably home. out. At the beginning of this year, who would have raised their hands and said, oh, yeah, Washington, which was 7-10, and 10, is going to play the Giants, which was 4-13 and 13 Neither. to get in the playoffs? Who would have looked at the Eagles 9-8 and eight last year and said, oh, yeah, they'll be 12-1? and one. That's well, the best division of football, who and nobody the Eagles, would have No, there were people who picked the not Eagles 12 and the Super Bowl, one. lots of them. Well, not 12-1. Let's though. move to two teams who are solidly in the playoffs and who actually won yesterday, Kansas City and Dallas. Kansas City allowed Denver. Denver stinks. To come back from 27-0 all the way to 34-28. And Dallas trailed Houston. Houston stinks. The entire second half before a two-minute drive pushed them across the finish line, 27-23. The combined records of Denver and Houston are 4-21-1 El Stinko. Wilbon, who looked shakier in their win? The Cowboys. The Cowboys, Tony, because Houston is the worst team in the league. I mean, Houston is going to choose first in the NFL draft. I mean, they're, they're the worst. So it's the Cowboys. And the Cowboys are playing at home, and they just, they just seem like they didn't care. That's the actual definition of a trap game. People use trap game now to use it in a flimsy way. They don't understand what a trap game is. That's a trap game where the Cowboys are going, I'm sorry, who's beyond Houston? Who we got next week and the week after that? And they were yeah. down in that yeah. game. You know, I never thought they were going to lose because I texted you, and I said declaratively, the Cowboys are going to win this game no matter how badly they look now. But, Tony, Dak Prescott, they got some problems. Dak has not played well. A lot of interceptions since he's come back. That offensive line is struggling. They lose their tackle. Um, they don't pass protect very well at all. So the Cowboys do have some issues, yet I think they're going to get those things corrected, and they're the only real challenger other than San Francisco to Philly in the NFC, but the Cowboys look, look bad. So I'm going to agree with you 100%. I'm going to say that their win was shakier, and I'll get to Kansas City in a second. Their win was shakier, but it was also more impressive. They made a great goal line stand at the end of that game. They did. Now, I think Houston should have kicked the field goal to make it so that Dallas had to get a touchdown to get back in that game. But be that as it may, that was a great goal line stand. And then they went 98 yards. And Dak Prescott went 98 yards. And that's why they're paying Dak Prescott the money. And so the last four minutes of that game, Mike, to me, has to be a great confidence builder for Dallas. I, Kansas agree. City, I agree with that. Kansas City is 10-3, and three, and seven of those 10 wins are by 10 points or fewer. So they don't beat the spread, but they do beat the team in front of them. One way or another, they do beat them. So the shakier win... We're both right on this was Dallas. Dallas. Let's take a break. Cowboys. Cowboys. Coming up was France's win over England, a bigger deal than Morocco's over Portugal. And did Zion and the Pelicans prove over the weekend that they're the best in the West? I told you they were good. I'll tell you this, Mike. 
I've been knocking Russell Wilson all year because I think he's been bad. I thought if he stayed in the game and didn't get hit hard, he was going to win that game against Kansas City. I thought he, he might three win touchdown it. He looked passes. better. He looked good. He looked <laughs> Trying to find out what's popping with the peeps in mail time. Let me see what's first. I like that Mail phrase. time? Popping with the peeps. Other people put in other words. I don't like the other words. Yeah. At the World Cup, Morocco beat Portugal and France beat England. Bigger deal. Well, France beating England was a bigger deal in just a sports sense. I mean, just to, to have those two powers playing, a defending champion in France and, you know, England, which is still just pining away and hadn't won since the 60s, and that, that's a bigger soccer event and result. But, Tony, the bigger cultural result is Morocco, an African nation for the first time advancing into the semifinals of World Cup and throwing out CR7. CR7 take a hike, and you got to think that's the last time. CR7 isn't wanted by anybody, it seems, country or club. They both are like sayonara. This guy could be one of the five greatest players of all time. Get out. So that's, I think, the bigger result uh, because of those two elements, Morocco and Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, you lost me at CR7. It's I mean, I figured seven. it out. Number it was Cristiano seven. Ronaldo. Come on now. I, didn't, I, I guess soccer cognoscenti like you refer yeah. to him as CR7. Yes, we do. In the way you refer to book. You know, I understand that. From well, a historic context, the bigger thing is Morocco. First African nation to get to the semifinals. I remember during this past summer, Anz Jabour from Tunisia became the first African woman to get to the finals of the U.S. Open, the finals yes. at Wimbledon. So yes. from a historical perspective, that's a bigger deal. But they're not going to win. And France could win and might well win. And if France wins, they're going to become the first country to repeat since about that? 58 and 62 since Brazil. Pelé. So that's 60 years. So in the here and now, France is a bigger deal. And I'm sorry they played England in the quarters and not the finals. And I'm sorry, yeah, poor Harry. At least the semis. That would have been a good final. At least the semis. The good semis final. at least, yeah. Who had the bigger weekend? CR7? No, I jest. The Warriors for beating the Celtics or the Pelicans for beating the Suns counted twice? Well, I mean, the Pelicans, Tony, I they're the best team in the West right now. I, I, they are. And that, that'll change, perhaps, probably, because I think the Warriors... Last night was a game that they can use. I hate the phrase statement game because it's like December. But, Tony, you know, I was at that game, and I, going into that, Saturday, my colleague it, Stephen A. and Jalen night. said they were looking at, you know, Boston being the best team in the league, which they are, and Jason Tatum being the MVP of the league, which he is. And they were looking for them to maybe, you know, take out the Warriors. Right. And I said, no, no, no. They're going to play like champs. And they did play like champs. And Klay Thompson went out there and lit it up. And then so did Steph Curry join him in that result of best shooting backcourt in the history of basketball. So I think the Warriors, yeah. Tone, I, yes, the Pelicans are impressive. I told you that going into the weekend, but I'm going to take the Warriors and what that meant to them. It meant something. I love you. I've loved you for 40 years. You couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> it's the last game at the end of a road trip for the Celtics. They are the best team in basketball. It's wonderful that the Warriors It's win. not the last game. The they go to California, play, Southern California for two games this week. Whatever. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? It's a long road trip. You can't yeah. win them all. Yeah. The next time those two teams play for anything meaningful, if it happens, is in the finals yes. in June. And this game yes. will be forgotten. The other two games are not going to be forgotten by Phoenix. Okay, the answer here is the Pelicans, because what they did, they looked up at a team that knocked them out of the playoffs last year, that finished about 28 games ahead of them in the regular season. That team, Phoenix, has a target that New Orleans is shooting at, and that's a big deal to beat them twice. They're going to play again this season, and they're yeah. going to likely play in the playoffs. In I think Phoenix. if you want to talk about statement games, yeah. Statement games to me, that was a statement game. The other thing oh, was yeah. more fun, was less of a statement. That's what I'm saying. Let's take a break. Coming up, Tiger and Rory, you boys, fall yeah. short at the match. Yeah, the match. I didn't even know what was going on. Caleb Williams, as told to you by me a hundred times, takes home the highs. times. Two hundred times. CR7. Uh, CR7. Wow, that Come is on so now. insider. It's no, so it's inside. It's like PG-13. Seven. seven up, lucky seven. Oh. Time, people. Happy 32nd birthday, Tyron Smith. The Cowboys Pro Bowl tackle practiced for the first time last Wednesday after suffering a torn hamstring in training camp and going on injured reserve. Smith is reportedly making progress towards playing 
has a chance to play against Jacksonville this Sunday. That would give Smith time to shake off the rust before the Cowboys enter the playoffs, which is a good thing since right tackle Terrence Steele just went out with a torn ACL and MCL in his left knee. Smith is an eight-time Pro Bowler, two-time first-team All-Pro. We talk about offensive lines and how vulnerable quarterbacks like Tom Brady and Joe Burrow and Justin Fields are if their lines can't protect them. Smith is 6'5", 320. He can protect Dak Prescott. Yeah, can, has, does, and presumably will protect number four. And they need him, Tony. And you know Prescott will be happy losing one critical offensive lineman to, at the very least, get another one back with those credentials. Happy anniversary, Patriots. On this day 40 years ago, when New England and Miami tied 0-0 late in the fourth quarter of a snow-filled game, Patriots coach Ron Meyer called timeout because he had an idea. He found a member of the Patriots' snow-clearing crew, Mark Henderson, a recently freed convict who had joined the Patriots' work release program. And Henderson drove a John Deere with a sweeper attached to it onto the field and cleared a patch of ground so kicker John Smith could try a 33-yard field goal. The kick was good. The Patriots won and made the playoffs. Don Shula was incensed, but to no avail. This is the famous snowplow game, the last one, because the next year the NFL banned snowplows from altering the playing field, which they should. Tony, one of the things I remember from that episode is that it was just sort of obsessively reported that this guy is an ex-convict. It was an ex-convict. It's like, so what? A head coach of an NFL team waved him onto the field. What was he supposed to do? Just stand there, fold his arms and have a, a, a quiet tantrum and say, no, I'm not going to do it. He did what he was supposed to do, it seemed to me. Do your job, as Bill Belichick do would say job. years later. That's right. A melancholy trails Paul Silas, the rugged forward who won two championships as a player with the Celtics and another with Seattle, died yesterday at age 79. Silas played 16 seasons in the NBA and then coached the Clippers, the Charlotte Hornets, and the Cavaliers, where he was LeBron James's first coach. Silas had a career record of 387 and 488. He went to the playoffs four times. Silas was in the mold of Gus Johnson and Ray Scott at forward, a tough defender and excellent rebounder who would score when needed. Silas was a five-time all-defensive player and a two-time all-star. Paul Silas's son, Stephen, is the head coach of the Houston Rockets. Tony, I have a sense of how much you like and respected Paul Silas, who I know when you were covering the NBA, he was a primary member. He played on those Celtics teams with among others, Dave Cowens, John Havlicek, JoJo White, Hall of Famers, Don Chaney, Don Nelson, and then Charlie Scott, I think, on the second of those championship teams. He was, but he was the heart and soul in a lot of ways of those teams. It was just great to watch him as a kid. We also want to note the death of soccer writer Grant Wall. Wall died on Friday while covering the World Cup match between Argentina and the Netherlands. He was 49. Mm. Wall wrote for Sports Illustrated for 25 years writing the cover story on the then high school phenom LeBron James entitled The Chosen One. But soccer was Wall's specialty and why we were lucky to have him as a guest on this show. Flowers and a picture of Wall were placed in the press box for Saturday's match between France and England, which he had been planning to cover. Tony, it was such a, a jolt, a shock. I, you know, I was at a basketball game uh, in San Francisco, and it reminded me, sadly, of 19 years earlier when another great Sports Illustrated writer and a dear friend of ours, Ralph Wiley, not much older than Grant Wall, three years older and 52, died of a heart attack during a playoff game. And, I, I, you know, you, you think of it, Grant Wall was there doing wonderful work and people were sharing his work over the week and over the weekend as he passed away. And just uh, you feel for, for him and his, his professional family, but, but more often his family, his wife and his family family. It was stunning when I heard that news because I remembered yes. that he had been on this show. Yeah. I'd also had him on my radio show. He was wonderful. He was a really good writer as well. Yeah. Way too young. Way too young. One omission, Texas basketball coach Chris Beard was arrested and charged with felony domestic violence. Wow. Beard's lawyer says his client is, quote, 100% innocent. Man. Let's go to the big finish if we Let's could. Let's do it. Caleb Williams, your boy, your Gonzaga yes. boy, yes. won the high school. Gonzaga your high D.C., I'm, I'm so thrilled for him and his family, Tony, and all the Gonzaga high school community in D.C. Great for them. I told you he's going to win. He won easily, and he should have. He had a great season, even though they didn't make the playoff. Navy.
fired head coach Ken Niamatulo, Tulolo, excuse me, after losing to Army in double OT. Does that make sense that they fired this guy? No, he was a great coach. He, he won more than he lost. It's so hard to win at the service academies. Yes, it what is. are they thinking? What are they thinking? Eh. Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas beat Tiger and Rory at the match. Three and two, your reaction. Tony, you know I love all those competitors. I just, it, I, I can't get fired up for that now in December. I just couldn't. The Mets signed Japanese starting pitcher Kodai Singa to a five-year, $75 million deal. What do you think? Well, he throws at 101 miles an hour, which is important. The Mets payroll is now, with luxury tax, $421 million. Yeah. What? Last one. Done. Joel Embiid, your boy, 53 yeah. and a win over the Hornets. Is that significant? If you can keep him out there in top form, get Tyrese Maxey back healthy, keep Harden healthy, the Sixers can make a move. They can, Tony. Yeah. Tyrese Maxey, we like to call him TM7. We're out of time. Try and do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. He didn't wear seven. I'll give you $1,000 to give me his number. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time.